Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Finance Minister Praveen Gordon delivered his 2017 budget address against the backdrop of a weak economy and revenue collection, rumours of a possible cabinet reshuffle and President Zuma's call for radical economic transformation. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss how the minister navigated these perils. Hi Terence. Hi Sinal. How did the minister respond to the president's call for radical socio-economic transformation? Well, I think he took the issue on, uh, you know, straight on. Uh, he didn't try to skirt it. We know that there are these conflicts within government. The uh, cabinet seems to be split on a number of issues. And uh, Pravin Gordon looked at the issue of e radical economic transformation or economic transformation and really redefined it. And the first thing he did by, uh, uh, is, is to add or weave in growth into the, the narrative. So radical economic transformation or any transformation is not going to happen in the absence of a much faster growing South African economy. We know that we, we, we grew at about 0.5%, 0.4% last year. This year we're talking about 1.3%. That, that number is just not cracking it. Um, we need to be a, a closer to the 6% level if we're going to start creating the jobs that this economy needs to start dealing with its other problems of inequality and poverty. So, uh, the, you know, the fact that growth is now very much part of the radical economic transformation agenda, I think uh, is quite important. The other thing is to, uh, to, to tease out some of the global themes around uh, inclusive growth. This is not just a theme for South Africa. Around the world, we see it, um, that there's a lot of restiveness around the world. Uh, we've seen it in, in elections, we've seen it with Brexit, we've seen it in the US where people are feeling like they've been left out. Um, in South Africa, we talk about the missing middle at, uh, uh, at universities. And, uh, you know, the definitely there's, there's a whole uh, spirit in the world at the moment where people are not content around the way uh, the globalization has worked, how elites have benefited, and it's been too narrowly defined. So he then, uh, I think, did very successfully weaved in some of those aspects around um, inclusive growth into defining ra what radical economic transformation should be about. But ultimately, I think uh, the master stroke was to say that, you know, radical inf economic transformation is not a narrowly racially defi uh, defined term where we just uh, divvy off work or s uh, set aside work for uh, black empire or black firms. That is part of it. But the ultimate litmus test is going to be, are we creating jobs? Uh, are we growing this economy? And is this economy becoming more inclusive for people where a um, lot more feel like they're benefiting from both our democratic dispensation and ultimately from our uh, economic dispensation? At the moment, too few are. And I think the other master stroke is say, look, we need to have greater consensus around this term. So we need to have a dialogue between the social partners. We know government, business and labor have really worked very well together around the national minimum wage. Um, I think broadening that discussion to what we need to do to have a proper uh, uh, economic dispensation that is more inclusive of everyone, that people can feel more part of, that, uh, that uh, people are not feeling left out, left behind and angered by, I think is an important uh, point. This should obviously be broader than just government, business and labor. There's civil society groups, churches. We need to have some sort of conversation. And uh, I think, uh, again, uh, the minister uh, uh, provided the uh, platform for airing that as a possible uh, remedy so that we come together. It's in our DNA to negotiate. We know what we did in or pre-1994 uh, in getting this uh, democracy on track. Uh, we need to bring back that memory, dig deep, and uh, look at how we can change the economic structures so that uh, more people are benefiting and so that this debate isn't so narrowly defined about just uh, de-racializing the economy, which is an important aspect, but really about transforming the structure of the economy to make it much more inclusive. The other key issue was finding the revenue needed to continue spending on key programs without deviating from the consolidation promise. That's right. The, <coughs> the headlines were definitely about tax. So this, was a, this, was about, this whole budget was about where is um, Minister Goran going to be finding the revenue need, needed. When he announced in October he was 28 billion uh, rand short, he had to then find a way to close that gap. And what he did was really, uh, I think, in, in line with probably that narrative around economic transformation. He knew he couldn't lean uh, on regressive taxes. He couldn't lean too much on the poor. 
he had to keep spending on social programs and he has leaned quite heavily on the narrow tax paying base which I think does feel quite put upon and there are, there's going to be a reaction to that but he did this by creating a new tax bracket of 45% tax rate for those earning more than 1.5 million rand a year so it's a small group but he also didn't give much relief in adjusting the tax brackets for inflation so we you know when people usually every year the, bra the bracket creep is such that it's been ad adjusted so that we don't have to pay as uh, much tax in we, if we're in a certain category. That wasn't really adjusted very, uh, very sympathetically. And so that's where about a good portion, about 16 billion of that 28 billion is going to come from that narrow base of taxpayers of personal income tax. Um, the other uh, elements are the usual suspects, the sin taxes, the fuel levies. Those are the, where the other points of reference are for raising the rest of the money and then on the other end on the uh, expenditure end we saw that there was a the 10 billion cut to the ex expenditure ceiling and that helped uh, provide a balance not total balance so we've got a, a 1.56 trillion budget we have revenue collections of 1.44 uh, which means we're going to have to raise uh, debt uh, or go and borrow over 140 billion to close the gap to fund uh, uh, this, uh, this budget, uh, but it still keeps us within that deficit range of 3.1%, uh, which was uh, sort of guarded last year. But we do slip slightly um, in the outer two years of the deficit target, so I imagine the rating agencies will be looking at that a bit closely, as well as whether, you know, there is this risk when you're tapping into such a small base of taxpayers whether, and uh, quite a sophisticated base, whether there's not a risk of uh, avoidance or <laughs> different instruments where people try and use it to try and escape uh, this higher tax uh, taxation. So there is a risk there that you're putting a lot of eggs in one basket. So there's, so that it's not uh, not a risk-free strategy. But I think it was in line with this view that we, ne we need a progressive tax system, that we need to, to, need to recognize the inequalities in society as well as the, that the budget is a key redistributive tool for government, um, whether it's through the social grants or whether it's through the social wage, through education, health and security. But there we really need that social wage quality to improve quite seriously. And we, we're seeing uh, a lot of emphasis in the gap in getting value for money, uh, in the budget, in getting a value for money from our expenditure. But yes, tax was, uh, I think, the big theme um, overarching theme other than his response to radical economic transformation. I think this, these are the, this is going to grab most of the headlines. How credible is this budget given the political noise surrounding the minister, his deputy and national treasury in general? Yeah, the credibility gaps in South Africa are becoming quite large. As I mentioned right in the beginning, this gap, the seeming gap or um, schism within cabinet, within the ruling uh, African National Congress, within the ANC-led alliance, uh, you know, throughout society, um, there are these definite gaps that have emerged. And it becomes difficult when a finance minister is under this sort of pressure to put, you know, full credibility to his budget. So on paper, then the numbers, they've done a credible job. I think it's a very credible job uh, budget in a very difficult context. Um, uh, the speech itself, I think, was credible. I think there was a lot of support, a lot of applause during the speech. I think that both uh, both sides of Parliament, uh, you know, appreciated the, the sort of frankness of the address. But if we've got this continual um, pressure in the background um, of you know either the finance minister or his deputy being removed, you know, it does have an it does has uh, implications for society. It definitely have implications if there's any removal for obviously the rand and the, 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 the value that, w that which w will trade. It will definitely have uh, implications for our, our, our sovereign rating, whether we stay a non-junk -junk status. You know, if the finance minister were to be removed and his whole last uh, few, well, last year in office uh, after he took over after that debacle where Des van Rooyen was put in for four days after Tlantlaneni was removed, um, you know, was about really staving off the threat of a downgrade that has been uh, successful. But still, the questions remain. Uh, and it is very hard for Treasury, um, I think, is being used as a whipping boy quite a lot um, within, gov within government and outside government. 
and uh, you know, so th so the the political noise, as uh, the deputy minister in Kubisi Jonas mentioned, is having an effect. Uh, the, the the director general also mentioned it definitely does uh, have a, a demoralising effect, and uh, we've definitely seen departures from the treasury. Now these are highly skilled people, and people that uh, are also valuable to other employ employers. So the, 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 the credibility of the budget cannot, you know, there's no question it's a credible budget, but the people are also important behind this. And I think if the, there's a big change there, or even if there's a, a continual frustration of these people through this, um, this noise, either the noise or frustration by, um, uh, you know, putting in people in place that can, can uh, undermine them in the public domain or, or even privately, I think it does uh, eat into the credibility, and we must realise we're not out of the downgrade. Um, you know, we, we, that cloud hasn't been removed totally. Uh, we're going to be under assessed again this year by both, uh, well, Standard and Poor's, I think, first, and, and Fitch. So th there's definitely still a, a risk to our, to our rating, but more importantly, it's a risk uh, to the investor confidence in South Africa. We really know we're growing well below uh, our potential. Uh, we know that there's a no that the politics of the time is a, a major impediment to our growth. So, and 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 this is a is a key touch point for business. Uh, is this credible finance minister? Does he have the backing of his of the president uh, and of the cabinet? Uh, uh, Pravin Gordon made it clear that this uh, at, uh, this budget went through cabinet and it was fully aligned with uh, with everyone in uh, everyone in cabinet was fully aligned with this budget. Um, and he also reiterated that he serves at the pleasure of the president. Um, and that he feels his record speaks for itself over the last year and his team, and that they, they navigated a very tough uh, downgrade threat, and that they want to get on with the job. But uh, continually the noise keeps coming back, and uh, I think that is weighing on both the team and behind the scenes on a lot of, uh, a lot of officials at Treasury who we can't afford to be dislodged at this point. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.